Welcome to this presentation on why I use visual narratives to communicate numbers. What I'll be doing in this presentation is that I'll be giving some a brief overview of some basic concepts and some reasoning for doing visualizations, but only in brief. All of the topics I'll be covering, I'll be covering in much more detail in later videos, but this should be seen as some form of overview. What I will be covering is, I will be talking about some basic terminology. I will be talking about some ways of communicating numbers. I'll talk about why you want to visualize data. What is the idea of visualization compared to other forms of communication? I'll be talking about what is the characteristics of a good visualization. I will also be talking about what is the characteristic of good visual narrative. I will finally talk about what I have called a, um, a purposeful conversion of, um, of numbers to visual narrative. So just trying to indicate that process that's behind this. So first of all, some basic terminology. Um, a data visualization is a single map or chart or diagram or image um, as the one we see up here. So it's the building block that we'll be using. Our visual narratives typically consist of several of these visualizations, some text components that collectively enables the user to um, follow what we might call a narrated um, data exploration so the user can dive in through the data and dig up find feel that they are exploring the data on them on their own time or in their own time as opposed to this you can say that the infographics is typically heavily narrated um, and is much less explorative in its um, in its way of functioning it's much more okay this is the facts so um, fewer data less explorative heavier narrated typically when we talk about um, communicating numbers there's a classic form there is the tabular form yes. and variants of it we can color the numbers and the cells or red if they're negative green if they're positive or that type of things so um, but basically the tabular form we um, can also communicate numbers using some of statistics so calculating the mean or variance and so etc we can um, use uh, inferential statistics so statistics that test hypothesis so if we ever see things like significant differences and so on then we're talking about inferential statistics and finally we can use visualizations or visual narratives as our way of communicating so um, why do it well first of all the brain is a fantastic visual pattern processing machine if we just look at a pattern like this we can effortlessly Leslie, detect small variations you know we're not in doubt that there's a red one there's a one that's a bit of out of line there's one that's a bit smaller there's one that's a zero and there's one that's at a bit of an angle so all of these things we can see in a fraction of a second we don't have to be conscious about it because this is so much built in to the way that our brain functions we can also use it as compared to our summary statistics that are very general and saying, okay, this is average. What the visualization can do is that it can open up um, and display, is it an efficient way of displaying the unexpected? Um, we can have an average, but there can be lots of ways of achieving the same average. Um, there is a classic example of this um, from um, 
from um, the 70s um, called Ascom's uh, Quartet. And what it basically does is we have these four data sets of X and Ys. Um, here we have it as a tabular form. All of these four data sets have exactly the same mean for the X values and exactly the same mean for the Y values, so 9 and 7.5. They have the same standard deviation, so spreading. And if you fit a linear function to it, um, it will have the same regression function and it will also have the same r squared error on that regression so in many ways if we look let's look at these standard statistics they are really identical but if we look at the graphics we can see that they are hugely different one of them is a bit more scattered one is a polynomium one is a straight line with a single outline and what is this a lot of points where most of them have the same x value but different y values so hugely different when we look at them as visualizations but very sorry very similar when we look at them from a statistical point of view so visualizations are useful but what is a useful or a good visualization um, there's different ways of translating good into something that's operational. Um, one is to say that it has to be expressive, so it should tell the truth and the whole truth and nothing but the truth. How that relates to graphs and things like I will try and explain in a later detail re video. They also have to be efficient, so they have to communicate the important aspects of the data in a quick and efficient way to the reader so the reader doesn't have to use more time than necessary to um, achieve, understand what's going on so we um, so we can do that in different ways but that's such as you know putting in these arrows and things like that but you know, basically try and think of the visualization as being um, if it is the right tool for the job, then it's a good visualization. So think about what does a user want, what does a user want to do, and then make a visualization that supports that, and then it will probably be a good visualization. What are the characteristics of a good narrative, visual narrative? Well, first of all, um, a narrative has to engage the reader that's why we tell stories that's because the reader links in with the author so oh we get, get bond um it doesn't you know hurt if it's, it's an aesthetically pleasing um doesn't don't try and and you know, claw the eyes of the reader um it should be memorable so it's not just about it when we talked about what it was a good visualization we said it had to be efficient but when we talk about the narrative we would like the audience or the reader to remember what the story that we told what was it go, that was going on so it should be memorable and um, it should enable the reader to explore different aspects of the data so having multiple visualizations that the reading oh look at compare this way and compare that way so giving the reader the ability to go and explore on their own um, finally um, you shouldn't break or compromise the rules of a good visualization so um, you know while this chart is or visualization is memorable um, it's not a really efficient um, visual, visualization or it, it has lots of clutter and it will take time to read because all of those things that are around it um, so yeah it's memorable but no it's not efficient that was you know my brief overview um, and all of these topics I've covered, I'll go into larger detail 
in later presentation. So hopefully I'll see you there. Bye.